So nothing new from the other night? No, um, clean bill of health, I think. Um, and you know, you've seen, um, you know, Ross coming back, to just doing some saying, I believe, I think. Um, we'd be lucky to get him back before the end of the season. And then your long terms, Mo and, uh, and uh, Lammy. Um, you know, so we have Joe Pritchard back though in the fold, so you know that's boost competition for places. You had Matt Butcher back for, for the last game. How important has he been for you this season? Because it, it, it appears like one of those situations that when he's not in the team, suddenly it looks like there's a, a big gap there. Yeah, I, th I think he's noticed when he is in the team. Though. Uh, we had this conversation last week about you know the players who do the unsung hero role. Um, I think Seamus would say Mark that one. Um, you know, Matt, Matt's played every game, so you know that's no coincidence. You know, only be, only out because of injury. Um, and then you see the performance Seamus put in the other night, which is up there with probably one of the best midfield performances I've ever been seen at Eccleton. So. Um, we need everyone available and, you know, when they're all striving for the same thing. You know, I had a chat with Cam, you know, Cam lost his place on what I thought was harsh sending off. He'd made two fouls against Lincoln, uh, sorry, sorry, against Hull. He'd made two fouls and, you know, I think in hindsight now the referee probably wouldn't have sent him off if he'd realised he'd already booted him. Um, and they were, they were in, they were in dramatic yellow cards. And as Cam lost his place and his attitude around the training grounds, around the lads when they were playing, was fantastic. And I commented that to him and he said, he said, well, he said, the way the, the feeling is around the place, he said, you'd stand out like a sore thumb if you, if you didn't, you know, if you didn't like want to be supportive of the team, he said, but he said, that's what he wants to do anyway. You know, that's regardless of what other people would think. He wants to support the team. He wants the team to do well. And obviously he wants to play. And he came in during the night and was fantastic. And, you know, he came on a sub on Saturday as well. So that's what we've got. And we've got lads who are all wanting each other to do well. Obviously they all want to play. But the first and foremost thing is that it's it. The goal is for the team to win games. Or just the squad, the club. And everyone can pull apart in that, you know. and. You know, I, I know I, I sometimes go on like a broken record, but everyone who's connected with the club is important in that respect. Everyone does their little job that all goes to the greater good of getting where we want to go. Is that understanding and that level of professionalism something you target in a player when you bring them in, or is it something that's fostered when they get here? A bit of both. Um, you know, we do try and encourage it. Uh, you know, I, I think Nathan Baxter was the one who set the bar this year. You know, he came in, big reputation from Chelsea. Um, couldn't get in because of Toby's unbelievable form at the start of the season. And Toby didn't do much wrong to lose his place. But he never complained once. First in, last out. Uh, model professional. And I think that's rubbed off onto a lot of the players and it's refreshing. Elsewhere, would there be bigger fish within the squad who would have more clout and therefore if they were unhappy there'd be groups of players that were unhappy. <laughs> I think it's difficult to be a bigger fish than me and Jimmy to be honest like uh, but uh and John don't get the wrong side of John too sorry. Um oh when they come here they quickly know. I mean we've got good senior pros as well. You know, you go back to the way they conduct themselves, Mark and Seamus, uh, you know, the way they, they train, the way they look after the bodies, you know, and, and they're getting the, the, the longevity out of their career. And I think Sean's taking a, a slice of that now, and, and he's seeing how long Mark and Seamus have gone, and, and he wants to do the same. Gary Roberts coming in as well, model pro, wants to do things right. So, you know, it's a good mix, it's a good balance, and players want to push each other on and you know, try and set a good example to each other. Does that dynamic help you when you've had a disappointment? I know you played well the other night, but you didn't get the result you wanted. Does having those characters in your changing room help you be ready for a game three days later? I think so. You know, I came away, honestly, one of the first times I've ever felt like that after the game. Uh, I remember when we, we dominated 
Plymouth away four or five years ago and we lost 1-0 and I came away scratching my head because we missed chance after chance and I was really bitterly disappointed that day and I've changed myself, you know, I've had to alter my, my, my way of thinking, I've tried to become a better manager, I've tried to be calmer in my approach. Uh, although you might not have seen that after the game, I lost my head a little bit, but I, I, I didn't feel the same way as what I, I would do years ago when we've lost, because Ben hasn't made to, meant to make that mistake. The lads haven't meant to miss the chances. The keepers had a, an inspired day. And you've got to study how we played, and we played exceptionally well. Then when you look at the results that went around us, you say, oh, we've missed a chance there that we could have been right in there, and that's but it hasn't done that much damage. So, from that point of view, uh, I've come away feeling comfortable that we're going in the right direction. We're playing well, we're an improving team. Um, we played a system that I've never started with in over 1,100 games in management, me, myself and Jimmy, but never started with that system. And so for us to take it to like a Dr. Water the way we did was impressive. Uh, and we had only worked on it for a couple of days. Um, well, a day, to be fair. Uh, with not the, the personnel that we thought we were going to be able to go with. So, the players to respond the way they did was fantastic. And I've said all along, we're, we're still a work in progress. You know, the way this has been truncated this season. Um, it's The players are still learning each other and they're still learning the methods. They're still learning the ideology that we've got. And when we get it right, we're good. We've just got to keep trying to play at the top of our game. You've had the three centre-halves for most of the season. You've changed the system to something that you've been working on for only a short amount of time. Is it good to have different options at your disposal? Yeah, very much so. You know, and you know, we, we now we should feel comfortable playing four or five different formations that we've used this year already. And I think the players, because we work a lot on shape in training, I think the players are comfortable now that they're to do the job they do. Does that make it more difficult for your opposition? Will Lincoln look at your last few games and go, it could be this, it could be this, it could be this? I hope so. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, formations uh, can be overrated, I think. You know, if you've got 11 players who are up for a game, you could be playing, well, one nine, you know, and you could play nine one. They're all up for it. Everyone attacks, everyone defends, and that's the that sort of the ethos that you've got to try and instill in the place. That we're all we're all trying to do our jobs. If you can help out somebody else doing their job, whatever the system we're playing, great. And when you get it right, it's like having thirteen or fourteen men out there because everyone's shipping out for each other as well. There are some big clubs, big reputations in this division, Lincoln at the top of the pile, what does that say? Yeah, well we played the beer at home and it was nothing in the game. I think if anything we shaded the game until the second off, um, which you know in hindsight now shouldn't have been a sending off, I think everyone's agreed with that in the world of football. Um, and we had a, a similar situation where Joe only got a yellow for the same thing on Saturday. So. We're looking forward to the game. It's a good test for us. You know, we, we respect what they can do. We know what they can do. We've analysed them. Um, and there'll be more analysis before Saturday's game. But, you know, we'll be prepared as best we can. And we'll do our best to time in the game. We won't be going there for the draw, that's for sure. Is it a good barometer playing the, the team we've accrued the most points so far? Yeah, of course it is. And, um, you know, I think now people are realising they took an easy game. Talked after the game about the Sean McConville situation, and we won't go there again. But there's since been a charge of failing to control players in, in that game. Is this sense of frustration growing that you feel like things are going against you in a disciplinary sense? Yeah, but you can't lose your head too much in that. Listen, we know that we shouldn't do that. Heat of the moment, things happen. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, if you look at mass brawls on pitches, it's nowhere near a mass brawl. It's coming together of people arguing more than anything, a couple of little shoves here and there, but you know, not an out the ordinary. We just gotta, we've just got got to keep drumming on to the players that we can't do that anymore. And, you know, hopefully they're, 
the authorities that be will see that it, it wasn't that dramatic an incident. Does it potentially undermine calling for better quality officiating or better decisions if there's dissent and, and stuff like that going on? Well, the thing is, it, we're up, you know, the, the, in the top levels you were brought in VAR to try and eliminate that. It hasn't eliminated the mistakes in football by referees, that's for sure. Um, but referees are only human and they make the least mistakes on the pitch out of anybody. But unfortunately, their mistakes have a big impact on, on what we do um, and, and the results of games. And that's why the frustration boils over. You know, call like today, they're, they're only human beings trying to do a job like everybody else. But if we make a mistake, it doesn't affect the referee. A referee makes a mistake, it can make a massive impact on our lives.